Hello and blessings. This class was originally filmed for Mohawk College, the college that I attended prior to coming to the practice of yoga. I hope that you enjoy. So we'll start today's session by spending some time relaxing on our back. Make sure that you have enough room to move around comfortably. And when you set up on your yoga mat, take time just to allow the legs to fall to the corners of the mat. Allow your arms to open away from the body to the point where the palms can comfortably face up. Taking these first few moments simply to settle in, to notice exactly how you feel. Maybe moving the mind from the toes through the legs, towards the top of the head. Noticing any areas where you hold tension. Any places in which you experience discomfort. Continue relaxing on your back, taking nice, deep abdominal breaths. Ideally feeling that as you inhale, the abdomen is rising. As you exhale, abdomen lightly falling down towards the mat. Continue breathing in this way. Just a few more cycles. Eyes closed if they're not already. Take a moment here to notice where is your mind moving? Are you aware of the thoughts moving through your head? Allow yourself this opportunity to let go of whatever came before the class. For these next roughly 90 to 120 minutes, forget about whatever you might need to do later today. The only thing that matters is this moment. You can begin to gently deepen the breath, feeling the abdomen rise and fall. With deeper breath, start to find gentle movements in the body. Wiggle the fingers, toes, lightly moving the feet and the hands. Gently bring the legs together, arms alongside the body. With a smooth inhalation, stretch the arms overhead. Point the toes, big stretch through the body. As you release, completely relax. You can take an inhalation to hug both knees in towards the chest. Start lightly rocking the body side to side very gently massaging those muscles throughout the lower back. It might feel nice to paint some circles with the knees a few times in one direction, a few times in the other. If it feels comfortable, take the hands under the knees, start to rock the body lightly forward and backward. Really work to round through the lower back. Preferably moving slowly with control. On your next roll forward, join me in a comfortable seated position. We'll open our practice in the traditional way. I would invite you to join me in the chanting of three ohms, as well as I'll repeat a short opening invocation. You can simply allow your eyes to close and listen to these sacred sounds. 
Hands resting wherever feels most authentic to you. Allow the eyes to close if you're comfortable. Exhale all the air out. Inhale for Om. Sahana Bhavatu, Sahano Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, Tejasvina Vadhi Tamastu, Mahavid Vishavahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Shivaya. Thank you all so much for joining. I will mention that if you have spectacles, if you have glasses, you can just take them off, set them to the side. If you have socks, they can stay on, but just know that in the same way that socks keep your body insulated, they can also insulate certain energetic movements. So you might not experience the practice as fully as you otherwise would. Seated in your cross-legged position, we'll take the left hand on the abdomen, the right hand on the chest, starting first with just a few comfortable abdominal breaths. We'll start by exhaling all the air out, and when you exhale, pull your abdomen back towards the spine. Inhale, feel the abdomen expanding. Exhale, drawing the navel backwards, squeezing all the air out. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Keep breathing in this way and really work to feel that there's movement only at the left hand, only at the abdomen. Very little movement happening at the chest. Trying as much as possible to continue this deep abdominal breath throughout the remainder of the practice. Ideally breathing with the nose, not so much breathing with the mouth. You can release the hands back down to the knees or maybe resting in the lap. Take a few more breaths as you are. Again, just checking in with how you feel. Beautiful. Beginning to move the body, we'll roll forward over the knees. Join me in a tabletop position, setting up the hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips, a few gentle cat-cows to warm up the spine. We can take an inhalation to arch the back, gazing up to the ceiling. Exhale round the spine, tuck the tailbone under, gaze down toward the thumbs. Inhale to arch, work to pull the shoulder blades together. Exhale to round, push the back of the heart up to the sky. Keep moving like that. Your own tempo could be a little quicker or a little slower than I'm moving. Ideally, the body matches the tempo of your breath. Maybe with the eyes closed, Moving just a few more times in this fashion. Coming back to a neutral position with the spine, we'll start to warm up a little through the wrists. Just turn your fingers towards the outside edges of your yoga mat and think about pushing the back of the heart up towards the ceiling. We'll gently shift the shoulders side to side. Feeling some gentle stretching going through the forearms, the wrist flexors. 
You'll notice the spot between upper arm and forearm. We call that the eye of the elbow or antecubital space, I suppose, for health and wellness students. Try to keep those eyes of your elbows turning in, looking in towards each other. And again, back of the heart pushing tall. Keep the side to side motion, but start to add a semicircle, shifting your hips back to the heels, then up to the hands. Feeling any sensations in the wrists. Beautiful. We'll come back to our kneeling position. Gently release the hands. You can give your hands a nice light shake, releasing any tension we may have created. Reach the hands forward, tuck the toes under. However is appropriate, you can find downward facing dog. For a moment, we'll just fine tune the alignment of our downward dog. With an inhalation, shift forward to plank position. Keep the shoulders roughly stacked over top of the wrists. You should feel here that we have that alignment, shoulders over the wrists, heels roughly over top of the toes. Then just press the hips back without changing the hands or feet. And notice if you look back towards your toes, you should see only toes. The heels are hidden behind the toes. You might need to rotate your heels a little bit to the outsides of your mat. And then as much as possible, work to push the ground away, elevation through the shoulders. If you'd like to find some gentle movements, maybe pedaling out through your heels, maybe swaying the hips side to side. I'll mention that there, if there is any tightness through the legs or the lower back, you can always have a little bend in your knees. Heels don't need to be on the mat but preferably they're working down towards the ground. Take just a few more breaths wherever you are. Notice how this posture feels the first time around. Moving along with a smooth inhalation, start to tiptoe your feet towards the top of your space. Find a standing forward fold, relax the head and neck. Any position with the hands is most welcome. Maybe even supporting the hands on the thighs to take away some of the strain. Or if you'd like a little more, perhaps interlacing the fingers by way of the lower back, finding a little chest expansion, extending at the shoulder. Wherever you are, just take this time to notice the length through the backs of the legs. Notice the length through the spine. Remember how far the body has allowed you to bend. Preparing to make our way up. Gently bend the knees. Feel that you have some strong legs. With a smooth inhalation, rounding the body up. One vertebrae at a time. Chin lifting last. Join me in standing. We'll separate the feet about hip distance apart, maybe a little bit wider then. And the arms can come out to a T position. Gently start to rotate through the torso. Side to side motions. Preferably keeping your feet planted to begin. And ideally the head looking forward. If it feels better for you, you can be turning the head all the way with the torso but not doing that if it brings any sense of dizziness. Now work to target a little bit more through the chest. How can you change this swinging motion to feel some stretch through the region of the chest? It might work for you to start using the feet coming up to the toes of the opposite foot. Keep the breath flowing nice and deep. And again, we'll change the movement ever so slightly. Try to target more so through the upper back. Find sensation at the upper back, the region of the shoulder blades. Beautiful. 
start to gently slow down the motion. Slow it down, allow your arms to start relaxing. Eventually coming to stand in stillness. Notice how you feel. Sensation of more circulation, more blood moving to the fingertips, the arms. We'll do one more exercise to warm up through the wrists. For this one, bring your feet a little bit tighter, directly underneath the hips, and the hands will start, just palms facing out, roughly at the region of your shoulder. We'll start first with an external rotation at the wrist while you open and close the hands. Keep that external rotation, keep opening and closing the hands, but now start to reach your hands towards the outside. Extending the arms outwards. Once you find that fully extended position, internally rotate at the wrists and start to bring the hands all the way back to that starting position. Good. We'll do it one more time like that. External rotation at the wrist. Start to reach your hands out to the sides. Try to squeeze your biceps. Keep some tension in the arms. Then internal rotation, bringing the hands back to their starting position. We'll do the same movement, but this time arms will move forward and backward. So external rotation at the wrists, reaching your hands out in front. Try to keep your elbows pointing down towards the ground. Internal rotation, bringing the hands back to their starting position. You should be feeling a little heat in the wrists and forearms by now. One more time like that. Exhale, external rotation, reach the hands out in front. Inhale, internal rotation, hands coming back to their starting position. Same thing, but this time going up and down. External rotation, wrists, exhale, reach the arms all the way up overhead. Try to keep your ribs pulling in, core is strong. Inhale, internal rotation, hands coming back down. One more time in that direction. Exhale, external arms reaching up. Keep opening and closing. Try not to get lazy with the hands. Inhale, internal, hands coming back down to their starting position. Beautiful. Gently relax the arms, maybe give them a light shake, perhaps massage the forearms if there's any unwanted tension there. And join me in standing towards the top edge of your yoga mat. Relaxing with the feet together, arms alongside the body, Practice a few rounds of Surya Namaskar, Hatha Yoga Sun Salutations. Begin by taking a deep breath in. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center. Stay here and breathe for a moment. Work to push your palms firmly together and try to lift the elbows almost so that the upper arms are parallel with the floor. Take an inhalation, reach the arms up overhead. Find length, gently open the chest, engage the buttocks. Exhale, fold forward from the hips. Ideally, palms are flat. You can stay here and breathe. What we want to find is that the hands are beside the feet, fingertips in line with the tops of the toes, bending your knees as much as you need to to get the heels of the hands flat. The hands will stay in the same position throughout the rest of our sun salutation. Now, with a smooth inhalation, step your right leg as far back as possible and lower your right knee down. Continue to breathe, work to lift your chest slightly, feeling some stretch through your right hip flexor. With the next inhalation, work to step your left leg back, meeting the right foot, find a plank position, take a few breaths here. Refining our plank, think about pushing the back of the heart up towards the sky, engaging the glutes. One long line of energy from heels to the top of the head. Take a last inhalation. As you exhale, lower down to the knees, lower the chest, and work to bring the forehead all the way to the mat. Inhale, slide the body forward, point the toes, gently pushing into the hands to find cobra pose. Work to roll the shoulders down and back, elbows hugging alongside the ribs. With your next exhalation, tuck the toes, push the hips up and back, Find downward facing dog. 
We'll move along. Step your right foot all the way forward. Left knee is down. Take a few breaths here. If that movement was challenging in any way, you might like to try lowering first your left knee, then bringing your right leg to the top edge, and maybe even helping your right foot with the right hand. From our lunging position, we'll take one more inhalation. As you exhale, step to the top of your mat, standing forward, fold, relax the head. Inhale, reach the arms forward, long spine, reaching all the way back up. Exhale, softly relax the arms alongside the body. Take a few breaths. We'll do the exact same thing on the other side. But now moving a little quicker, we'll try to go breath to movement. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center, engage the core. Inhale, reach the arms up, open the chest. Exhale, fold forward from the hips, palms flat, bending the knees if there's a need. Inhale, step the left leg as far back as possible. Lower the left knee down, try to lift the chest lightly. Step your right foot back, plank position. Exhale, lower the knees, lower the chest, lower the forehead down to the mat. Inhale, slide the body forward, pointed toes, find cobra pose. Exhale, hips lifting up and back, downward facing dog. Smooth inhalation, stepping the left foot all the way forward, making any adjustments you need, right knee is down. Exhale, standing forward, fold, relax the head and neck. Inhale, reach the arms forward, long spine, reaching all the way back up. Exhale, relax the arms alongside the body. Continue the practice, deep breath in. Exhale, heart center. Inhale, find length. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, step the right leg back, knee is down, chin lifted. Hold the breath this time, step back to plank, retain the breath here. Exhale, lower knees, chest, forehead down. Inhale, slide the body forward, cobra pose, shoulders away from ears. Exhale, lift the hips up and back, downward facing. Smooth inhalation, right foot steps forward, lower the left knee down, lift the gaze. Exhale, standing forward fold, relax the head. Inhale, reaching the arms forward, up, slightly back. Exhale, relax the arms alongside the body. Feel the system getting a little warmer, maybe a little more cooperative as you move. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, find length, reach the arms. Exhale, fold forward and down, palms flat. Inhale, stepping the left leg back, knee is down, lift the chin. Hold the breath, step back, plank position. Keep pushing the back of the heart tall. Exhale, lower knees, chest, forehead down. Inhale, slide the body forward. Exhale, lift the hips up and back, downward facing. Smooth inhalation, stepping left foot forward, right knee is down. Exhale, standing forward fold, relax the head. Inhale, reach the arms forward, up, find length, engage the buttocks. Exhale, relax the arms alongside the body. One more time on each side, breath in. Exhale, heart center. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward and down. Right leg, inhale. Retain the breath, plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, slide forward. Exhale, downward facing. Inhale, right foot forward. 
Exhaling, the left foot follows. Inhale, reach forward, lightly back. Exhale, relax the arms alongside. Deep breath in. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forward and down. Inhale, the left leg back, knee is down. Hold the breath, step back, plank position. Exhale, lower knees, chest, forehead down. Inhale, slide the body forward. Exhale, lifting hips up and back, downward facing. Smooth inhalation, left foot steps forward, right knee is down. Exhale, standing forward fold, relax the head. Inhale, reach the arms forward, up, slightly back. Exhale, relaxing the arms alongside the body. Separate the feet for a moment, standing with the eyes closed. Take time to notice the changes in your body. Perhaps an elevation to your heart rate. Maybe the breath trying to flow more heavily. Work to relax the body with longer, slower exhalations. Changing up our pattern slightly can bring the feet back together, arms alongside the body. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center. Now this time as you inhale, stepping the right leg all the way back, finding balance in a high crescent lunge. Ideally here, the feet have some space between your feet. They're not one in front of the other. So a nice comfortable stance for your balance. We want to work to roll the right hip forward, pull the left hip back, sink a little deeper into the lead leg. Once you feel comfortable, maybe inhaling to reach the arms up overhead, shoulder blades drawing down the back. We work to hug the rib cage in. Ideally, there's not so much arching happening through the back body. Torso is nice and tall. Now adding some movement here. With an inhalation, bend and tap your right knee. As you exhale, work to straighten again to the left, the right leg. Inhale to bend. Exhale, extend. Three more times, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling, one last time. Beautiful. With an inhalation, this time work to straighten through your left leg. We're moving into pyramid pose. You can release your arms and work to shift the chest forward, folding eventually fingertips touching the floor. Maybe you can get the palms flat. If neither one of these options are working for you, maybe you have some blocks or some cushions to rest the hands on. But we want to notice the difference between pointing the left foot and flexing through the left toes. Practice whichever option feels better in your body. And we want to really work to elongate the spine. Think about lengthening the forehead as far forward as possible. Eventually folding down. But the practice of yoga, it takes time. It's never about creating perfect shapes. It's about finding ways to work with your own body. Take a few more moments in this position. Beautiful. With your next inhalation, we'll come back to our low lunge and adding on, keep your right hand planted on the mat. We want to rotate all 10 toes 
off towards the left side of our mat. All ten toes, turn them to point to the left side of your yoga mat. And then we inhale to reach the left arm up. You should feel in this position some stretching happening through the outside of the left hip. And maybe notice the difference between reaching your hips up high versus letting your hips sink down low. There's always very subtle ways we can tweak these postures to find slightly different effects. Take just two more breaths with this outer hip opener. With your next exhalation, coming back to our low lunge, toes pointing towards the top edge. We'll inhale, step back to plank position. Exhale, lower knees, chest and forehead. You could be doing chaturanga if you want, but it's not so necessary. Inhale, slide the body forward, toes pointed, cobra pose. Exhale, lifting the hips up and back. We'll take a few breaths in our downward facing dog. Again, feel free to pedal through the heels, sway the hips, any micro movements that feel good for the body. Notice if there's any difference in your downward dog from the first time we practiced this posture. Beautiful. This time to release, we'll just tiptoe the feet towards the top edge of our yoga mat. Trying to keep the knees straight as much as possible, but you can always have a little micro bend if that's more appropriate. When you arrive at the top of your mat, we'll inhale to lift and lengthen halfway, flatten the spine. Try to keep the weight forward over your toes. Then exhale, folding over the legs, relaxing the head. Inhaling, reach with the arms, lengthen forward, up, lightly back. Exhale, relax the arms alongside the body. The same thing on the left. Take a deep inhalation. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center, push into the palms. Inhale, stepping left leg back. Find balance in the high crescent lunge. Awareness on the hips, left hip forward, right hip back, bending deeply into your right knee. When you're ready, arms reaching overhead. Two more breaths before we add movement. Adding on, with an inhalation, bend and tap the left knee. Exhale, straighten through the left leg. Inhaling to bend. Exhale to extend. Keep the rhythm. Last time. Moving on, the inhalation, start to straighten through your right leg. Arms can relax alongside the body. We work to pivot forward, finding our pyramid pose. And again, from the very beginning, try to elongate, lengthen forward out of the hips, as opposed to rounding and curling through the back. Fingers find their favorite position. Maybe you have some blocks, if that's more appropriate. And again, toes pointed, foot flexed, whatever you did on the first side. In this position also, it can be helpful to try to square the hips. Right hip rolls back, left hip rolls forward. You could always take one hand to your lower back and just notice, are my hips level? What do I need to do to get that alignment? Finding a few more breaths. Ideally, awareness through the back of the right leg, targeting hamstrings, back of the calf. Be 
preparing to move forward. Next inhalation, bending into the right knee. And again, this time we keep our left hand planted from our low lunge. Just turn all 10 toes, turn both feet to point off towards the right side of your yoga mat. And when you turn the feet, you should find that you're actually on the knife side edge, the pinky edge of both of your feet. Ideally keep the feet flexed to protect the knees. Once you're set, inhale to reach the right arm up. Notice how it feels, hips lifting versus hips lowering. Spending a few more moments here. And I'll just mention that sometimes within the science of yoga, the things that feel the best are not exactly what we need to improve. Sometimes we need to find ways to enjoy the uncomfortable positions, the uncomfortable situations. One more breath wherever you are. Next inhalation, we rotate back to our low lunge. Both hands are planted. When ready, step back to plank position. Exhale, lower knees, chest, forehead down. Inhale, slide the body forward. We'll pause here in our Cobra Pose. Really work to roll the shoulders down and back. Feet are ideally together to help stabilize and protect the lumbar spine. The tendency is for us to only extend through a few vertebrae in the lower back, but ideally we want to work to bring that extension into the middle and upper spine. You should feel that the arms are working. We'll take just one more full breath here. Maybe the eyes closed. On your exhalation, rolling over the toes, downward facing dog. Please feel free to find any movements, or if it's more appropriate, you can always drop to the knees, find a few breaths in child's pose. Coming back to downward facing dog, if you left. Next inhalation, We'll start to tiptoe our way to the top of our yoga mat. Finding a fo standing forward fold. With an inhalation, we'll lift and lengthen, flatten the spine. Exhale, folding over the legs, relax the head. Leading with the arms. Inhale, reach forward, lengthen all the way back up. Relax the arms alongside the body. Again, separate the feet, close the eyes, check in, notice how you feel. Moving along, with a smooth inhalation, reach the arms straight out in front, parallel with the earth. As you exhale, begin to bend the knees, sinking the hips. Sit down and lie down, finding a few breaths on the back. Anytime we come to one of these short relaxations, start with a few deep dynamic breaths, letting the body know that it's time to relax. Eventually allow the breath to become more soft, more subtle, until eventually you can barely feel the air entering and leaving your nose. Moving on to some light core activation. We'll bring the legs together, arms alongside the body for single leg lifts. Try to be aware of the lower back. We really want to work to pull the lower back down towards the floor. For the health and wellness students, we're using transverse abdominis, tiny muscle just underneath the navel. And we'll start with the right leg, roughly three seconds up, three seconds down. We'll start by exhaling all the air out, push the lower back down. 
Inhale, reach the right leg up, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Exhale, right leg down, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Keep that contact, lower back to the floor. Inhale, left leg, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Exhale, down, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Inhale, right, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Exhale down, ideally a straight, strong knee. Inhale, left leg up, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Exhale down, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Inhale right, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Exhale down, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Inhale left, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Exhale down, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. This time, bring your chin in towards the chest and float your arms alongside the body. Same thing. Inhale, right leg up, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Exhale, keep the lower back pushing down, strong legs. Inhale, left leg, Om 1, Om 2, Om 3. Exhale down, Om 1, Om 2, Om three, last time, inhale, om one, om two, om three. Exhale down, om one, om two, om three. Left leg, inhale, om one, om two, om three. Exhale down, om one, om two, om three. Relax the head, relax the arms. Again, inhale, bring the right leg all the way up. Work to push the right heel towards the ceiling. You can interlace the fingers behind the back of the right thigh. Maybe you have the range to grab behind the calf or the heel. Whatever works for you. You can even have a little bit of a bend through your right knee. Find what feels best. And notice if your right hip has started coming a little bit closer to your right shoulder, Work to push the right hip down towards the bottom edge of your yoga mat. Keeping both feet flexed, ideally both legs nice and strong. And notice the left leg. Tendency is for the left foot to fall out to the side. Keep the left toes pointing straight up. Well, prepare to deepen. Take a big inhalation. As you exhale, lift the forehead towards the right knee. Maybe hands reaching a little higher up the right leg. If your arms are down on the calf and your elbows are bent, try to reach the hands a little higher. Maybe you want to take index finger and thumb of the right hand around the right big toe and float the left palm above the left thigh. Wherever you are, one or two more breaths, feeling some length through the back of the right leg. Keeping your hands wherever they are. Take one more inhalation. As you exhale, relax the head and shoulders down. We'll release by bending the right knee in towards the chest, hands around the shin, closing space between thigh and abdomen. Take three deep breaths here. Ideally full abdominal breath, really working to expand the belly towards the thigh. Feeling in particular that pressure created with deep abdominal inhalations. Setting up a supine spinal twist. Keep the left hand on the right knee. With your exhalation, guide the knee across the body. Maybe bumping your hips off towards the other side of your mat. Maybe opening your right arm in the opposite direction, turning the head to gaze at the right thumb. Wherever you are, work to keep gluing your right shoulder blade down to the mat. Keeping the right shoulder blade down is more important than bringing your right knee all the way to the floor. This will help us create a more complete twist through the spine. Take a few more moments. I'll mention it can be somewhat unwise to push your body to the point where you get those cracks out. Most of us are not trained chiropractors, so we really don't know what we're doing. More often than not, we do more harm than good. 
If the cracks happen naturally, that's completely okay. Just don't force it. Next inhalation, guiding your right knee back towards the center. And take a moment, maybe painting some circles with your right knee a few times in one direction, a few times in the other. Making any movements that might feel good for that right hip. To release, we'll straighten the right leg to the sky and exhale, lower the right leg down. Relax for a few breaths on your back. Notice the difference between right and left side. Maybe your right hip is almost pushing a little down towards your yoga mat. Might almost feel like the right leg is a little longer than the left. Preparing to bring some balance to the body. Bring the legs together, push the lower back down. Inhale to lift the left leg all the way up, pushing the left heel towards the ceiling. We'll interlace the fingers behind the back of the left leg, either at the thigh or the calf or the heel if appropriate. Remember to keep your right leg active, right toes pointing up. And if you feel the left hip scooting up towards the left shoulder, try to push it down towards the bottom edge. Feel how that intensifies the stretch through the left hamstring. Preparing to go a little deeper, keeping both feet flexed, both legs strong, deep inhalation to prepare. As you exhale, lift the forehead towards the left leg. Hands may be reaching higher up. Perhaps taking hold, index finger and thumb around the left big toe. Two or three more breaths wherever you are. Try to almost think about lifting the torso towards the leg. Feel that kick into your core muscles as opposed to pulling the leg towards the torso. One more full breath. Keep the hands where they are. As you exhale, try to lower the head and shoulders down. Gently release, bending left knee to the chest, hands around the shin, closing space between thigh and abdomen. Again, deep abdominal breaths. That light massage created with the deep inhalation, very easy way to massage our abdominal organs, enhancing what the yogis call Agni which means fire, but in this case, more specifically, digestive fire. Setting up our twist. Right hand stays on the left knee. When you're ready, guiding that knee across the body, maybe bumping the hips in the opposite direction. Deciding what to do with the left arm, with the head. Finding the best version of this posture for your body. It might even feel nice to support the left knee with either your right hand or even placing a pillow underneath the knee. Yoga is never about twisting to our depth. Never about the physical expressions of these postures but rather about the mental state which we're able to cultivate by, by being truly present with our body, with our practice. Take a few more breaths. Preparing to release. Next inhalation, guiding the left knee back to center. Again, finding any movements that feel good. Allow yourself time to release that tension. And when ready, straighten the left leg and exhale, lowering the left leg down. Spend a few moments relaxing in Shavasana. Again, be still, be steady. 
Notice how the body feels. As you relax, mentally preparing for our main inversion of today's practice, we'll be working with Sarvangasana, the shoulder stand. I'll mention that if you have uncontrolled high blood pressure, any issues with the eyes like glaucoma, if you're pregnant or perhaps on the first few days of your monthly cycle, it can be wise to avoid this posture. If for any of those reasons or any of your own, you'd like to opt out of the shoulder stand, you can simply elevate your legs up to 90 degrees, maybe even placing a pillow or a block underneath your hips. You'll still find some of the benefits, but just a little bit less intense. If you'd like to join for the practice of shoulder stand, I'll mention we should try to keep the head straight in this position, not turning the head side to side while we hold. We would set up with the arms alongside the body, legs together, lightly tucking the chin in to elongate through the back of the neck. We enter with a smooth inhalation, swinging the legs up, lifting the hips, supporting the back body with the hands. You don't need to make such a straight position in the beginning. Take just a few breaths to get used to the inversion. If you'd like to make yourself straighter, bending the knees towards the forehead, feel how that takes some pressure away from the spine. And from here, work to wiggle your elbows closer together, maybe bringing the shoulders more under the body. I like to get there by interlacing my fingers and pulling everything tightly together. And we work to bring the hands closer towards the upper back, towards the shoulder blades. When ready, straightening the legs back up, finding a taller, more stable shoulder stand. We'll stay here about 10 breaths total. We'll say we have seven more remaining. Should feel in this position, the hips are pushing lightly forward towards the face and toes aligned roughly over top of the eyes. If comfortable, close your eyes and keep your awareness focused at the region of the throat. Preparing for Halasana, can flex both feet Take one last inhalation. As you exhale, try to keep the hips high as you lower straight legs down behind the head. I'll mention that if you've had enough, if there's any discomfort arising in the body, you can always plant your hands on the mat behind you and roll down one vertebrae at a time. If you are holding plow pose and your feet are still in the air, try to keep supporting the back body with the hands. Otherwise, if your toes happen to touch comfortably, you could perhaps push both palms down to the floor behind you. Maybe interlace the fingers and do the same. Maybe reaching your arms overhead and resting the toes in the palms of the hands. Wherever you are, three more breaths. Staying just one more moment. If the toes are touching the earth, lift them a few inches away from the floor. And if they're not out there already, one at a time, planting your palms flat on the mat behind you, gently start to roll the body down, one vertebrae at a time, eventually lowering the legs, relaxing, find a few breaths in Shavasana. Try to stay still, just observe the sensations in the body. Practicing the counter posture for our shoulder stand, we work with Matsyasana, the fish. The setup for fish pose, try to bring your arms underneath the back of the body. Bring your elbows as close to one another as possible. Sitting on the wrists, fingertips reaching down towards the heels. Preferably the palms are flat in this position. 
Think about squeezing the shoulder blades together. Already there should be a sensation of opening through the chest. Now we want to imagine that there's a hand between our shoulder blades and to lift into this asana with an inhalation. Feel that hand lifting your chest a little higher, pushing elbows into mat, eventually drawing the crown of the head down to the floor. Feel that 90% of the energy, 90% of the effort flowing through the arms. Very little weight is actually in the head. In this position, the chest should be the highest point of the posture. And we feel that every inhalation, we keep lifting a little higher. Every exhalation, allowing our system to relax. Breathing here with full yogic breath abdomen, ribs, and chest. We hold roughly half the duration of our shoulder stand. Preparing to release. Next inhalation, pushing down through the elbows. As you exhale, release the upper body down, relax the head, release the arms away from the body. Before we relax, we'll interlace the fingers underneath the head. Using only the strength of your arms, think about bringing the chin in towards the chest, lengthening a little through the back of the neck. With only the strength of your arms, turn the head to look towards the right side. Gently move the head through center and gaze off towards the left. Arms are doing all the work here. Gently bring your head back to center. Let your head feel heavy. Allow it to start slipping through the fingers. Eventually the back of the head lands on the mat. Fingers could lightly massage the sides of the head. Massage a little around the temples. Maybe massaging down the jawline. The sides of the neck. Eventually relaxing the arms alongside the body. Take a few breaths in stillness. Relax. Simply observing sensations in the body. Guide the legs back together, arms alongside the body. Smooth inhalation, stretching the arms overhead, find length, point the toes, pull the lower back down. As you release, bring the hands onto the tops of the thighs. Making our way to seated, either by rolling forward with the strength of the core or rolling up through the right side. Switching gears, checking in with Paschimottanasana are seated forward fold. We can set up with both legs long, both feet flexed, and ideally we'll start a little bit more active. So it might mean engaging your quads in such a way that you almost float the heels up off the floor. I'll mention that if you find yourself rounded at all, like the spine is leaning back, it could help to take a cushion underneath your hips to kind of get yourself into a slightly more elongated spinal position. From there, we'll set up by inhaling to reach the arms up overhead, long spine. As you exhale, hinging at the hips, folding forward and down. Take a few breaths, relaxing in your forward fold. Doesn't need to be very deep. Just notice how far the body has allowed you to bend. We'll make a few self-corrections here. So with an inhalation, reach your arms forward, lengthen all the way back up. Really try to elongate the spine, reach the arms up as high as you can, flex the feet, big inhalation. As you exhale, hinging forward from the hips, go roughly halfway down. And again, we'll lift back up, inhale, find length, try to encourage length out of the lower back. Last time, exhale, folding forward and down. Relaxing the arms and ideally making some contact with the legs. You could be grabbing the feet or the ankles, perhaps taking index fingers and thumbs around the big toes. 
And ideally in this position, we want to find our length with the breath, not so much with the strength of the arms. Every inhalation, feel the sensations in the body. Notice where you experience tightness. And every exhalation, allow yourself to settle, to melt. If you have a good imagination and you like visualization, sometimes you can picture yourself as an ice cream cone. Every time you inhale, you feel that heat. Every time you exhale, melting a little closer to the mat. We'll stick around for another five breaths. Again, keep the focus at the region of the lower back. If your abdomen happens to be in contact with the thighs, which is eventually what we would like to do, but not necessary right away, if it is happening, keep your awareness at the region of the navel. Deep abdominal breaths. One more moment here. Preparing to release. Smooth exhalation. Reach the hands towards or even past the feet. As you inhale, bring the arms all the way back up. Gently release the arms beside the body. We'll check in with some single leg options. So you can bend through the right leg and bring the sole of your right foot to the inside of the left thigh, making a figure four with the legs. We'll be folding over our left leg and try to keep the torso square over your left thigh. Inhale to reach the arms all the way up. As you exhale, hinging from the hips, folding forward and down. Finding your comfortable position, spending about five breaths. Remember this practice is never about how far the body can bend. Never about how beautiful one's postures might look. It's all about the state of mind we cultivate while practicing. Learning to optimize the mind, the emotions, the energetic systems. Eventually, if we allow our awareness to go a little deeper, the physical body, the most superficial part of our being, begins to take care of itself in a very interesting way. Holding a few more moments here. This time to release, we'll inhale, rounding up, one vertebrae at a time, chin lifting last. Setting up for a lateral variation, we'll twist and take the left hand on the right knee. With an inhalation, reach the right arm all the way up, find length. As you exhale, start reaching towards your left leg, towards the top of your yoga mat. Maybe spending some time to elongate as you move. You could absolutely stay lifted, or if you have the range of motion, maybe right hand finds the left foot. Again, it's not necessary. Wherever you are, we want to keep the awareness on the rib cage, particularly the right side, and work to open the chest up towards the ceiling. Maybe turning the head to gaze past the right armpit. And for most of us, you'll notice that the right sit bone is lifting. That's completely okay, but try to encourage the right sit bone down to the ground. Just a few more moments in this lateral bending position. Preparing to release. With an inhalation, reach the right arm up. Gently lifting the torso and we twist back to center. Switching sides, extending the right leg, bending through the left. Find that figure four. When you're ready, inhale to reach both arms up. Find length. And again, long spine. Exhale, hinging forward and down. Find your preferred hand position. And release.
really work to feel the sensations in the body. Some will experience most sensation through the back of the right leg, others perhaps through the lower back, likely on the left side. Wherever you feel sensation, that's a sign where your limiting factors lie. Keep your awareness on those areas and work to relax with every breath. Preparing to release. Again, we'll inhale to round up. One vertebrae at a time. Lifting the chin last. Lateral variation. Right hand on the left knee. Inhaling to reach the left arm up. Really work to create as much length as possible. When you're ready, exhaling to start hinging forward towards the right leg. Moving slowly towards your edge, finding the position that works best for your body. Remember, we want to work to open the chest up towards the ceiling. Awareness on the left side body, breathing deeply with the rib cage. One more moment here. To release, we inhale, lifting the left arm. Torso follows, gently rotating back to center. We'll take a moment for some wide leg options. You can turn perhaps sideways on your yoga mat if that works best for you. Doesn't need to be so intense. You can go about 70% of your full straddle position. And we'll start by flexing both of our feet back towards the face, engaging the legs. And then we can just rotate the torso, a churning motion. Circular pattern, just noticing the sit bones, how they slightly lift and lower. Notice how the pelvis is tilting anteriorly and posteriorly. Change directions. This could be a very slow motion, or it could be a little quicker, whatever feels best in your body. Coming back to a neutral position, we'll start to fold forward. If you'd like to encourage, ideally we want our tailbone sticking out behind us. To help that motion, perhaps planting the hands behind you, just work to use your fingertips to push the chest forward. Keep engaging the legs. We're starting a little bit more active in this position. If you feel comfortable with the level of anterior pelvic tilt, the tailbone sticking out behind, maybe the hands coming towards the front. It's not necessary. You could absolutely stay with the hands behind you the whole time. Choose to stay as you are or use every exhalation to progressively melt a little closer to the mat. The main area of focus is our hips, our lower back. And to truly target those areas, we would think about folding forward, leading with the navel, as opposed to rounding and leading with the forehead or the shoulders. So if that means staying a little more lifted, I would say that's a more appropriate option. Finding a few more breaths wherever you are. Maybe playing a little with the feet. See what it feels like to point the toes versus flex the feet. And if there's any discomfort through the backs of the knees, any discomfort at all, try to keep engaging your thighs a little bit more or lifting up, coming a little bit less intense in the posture. Ultimately, all of the instructions that I'm offering there 
purely suggestions. The real teacher is your own body. Preparing to release. Next inhalation, start to lift the torso back up. You can take the hands under the knees with the strength of the arms, bringing the legs back together. We'll take a moment, hug the knees in towards the chest, arms around the shins. Inhale to lengthen up with the crown of the head. As you exhale, rounding the back, relaxing the forehead down to the knees. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, round and release. Lifting back to a neutral position. We'll straighten the legs slightly so that you have roughly 90 degree angle at the knees. And then planting the hands behind the body, preparing for reverse tabletop. Three different positions with the hands. Easiest option would be fingers pointing behind you. If you have any discomfort in the wrists, perhaps pointing the fingers to the outside edges of your yoga mat. Most intensity, fingers pointing in towards the hips. Ideally, when you're ready, we'll squeeze the shoulder blades together and think about inhaling to lift the hips up as high as you can, squeezing the buttocks and exhale, lower the hips all the way back down. We'll do that lifting and lowering a few more times. Inhaling to lift, keep squeezing the shoulder blades together, exhaling to lower. One last time, inhale and exhale. We'll lift again and hold for a few breaths. If it's comfortable, maybe allowing the head to drop back behind you. Squeezing through the buttocks. Work to keep encouraging your knees toward the midline. One more inhalation. As you exhale, lowering the hips down, relaxing the head. If there's any discomfort in the wrists, maybe giving the hands a light shake. Switching gears once again, spin around, resting on your abdomen. Head is towards the top of your yoga mat, resting one hand on top of the other, and resting one of your cheeks on that handmade pillow. Ideally, the toes are touching, but the heels falling to the sides of your mat. Notice the way that the breath is impacting the body here. You should feel that as you inhale, the abdomen is expanding, lower back rising. And as you exhale, abdomen shrinks, lower back falls, almost like a very soft self-massage. Preparing here for a short series of backward bends. Starting first with Bhujangasana, the cobra. So we've been here before, but we'll do a slight modification on Cobra Pose. You can bring your arms underneath the shoulders, lifting the chest ever so slightly. And then we'll just take the fingers to the outsides of our yoga mat, maybe about four inches off the yoga mat. And you can be up on the fingertips. We'll take an inhalation to lift through the chest. Take a few breaths here. Ideally, the feet and legs are together. We'll be doing some side to side motions. So with an inhalation, again, you can lift a little more through the chest. With an exhalation, dip your right shoulder down to the mat. Turn to gaze over your left shoulder. Inhale, come back through center, pushing into the ground. Exhale, other side, dip the left shoulder down, gaze right. Once more each side, inhale to lift. Exhale, right shoulder dips down, gaze left. Inhale. Last time, exhale, left shoulder. Inhale, lifting back up. Exhale, lowering all the way down, relaxing with the opposite cheek on your handmade pillow. Take a few deep, full breaths. Again, toes together, heels falling to the sides. Notice the movement of the lower back.
practicing today a few versions of Danyurasana, bow pose. We can set up by again bringing the forehead to the mat, this time arms alongside the body, and we'll bend the knees in such a way that we can take hold of the outsides of the ankles with the hands. Grabbing the outsides of the ankles, I would encourage you not to grab so much the tops of the feet or the toes. This can place a little unwanted stress through the ankles. Instead, grab the actual ankle joint, right around the big bones of your forearm, or of your shins rather. So we would set up in this position by lifting the knees from the floor, pushing the pelvis down towards the mat, maybe even flexing through the feet to protect more through the knees. When you're ready, start to kick the feet into the hands, lifting the chest up and back. We'll take five deep breaths here. You should feel that with the inhalation, abdomen is expanding, body is rocking lightly backward. And as you exhale, abdomen shrinks, body rocks slightly forward. Again, an opportunity to massage our abdominal organs. One more full breath. As you exhale, gently release. We'll practice bow pose one more time, but this time grabbing from the insides of your ankles, changing the hand position. The thumbs should be pointing up, grabbing from the insides of the ankles. The tendency in this version will be for the knees to want to splay out to the sides. They definitely don't need to be touching, but keep encouraging them in towards the midline. When you feel ready, start again by lifting the knees, then kicking the feet into the hands, lifting the chest up and back. Notice the differences in sensation. What's changed between this version and the first version of bow? One more breath, maybe lifting a little higher on the inhalation. As you exhale, gently release. We'll plant the hands under the shoulders, tuck the toes, gently pushing the body up and back. Find child's pose. Preferably with the knees together, inviting a little bit more rounding through the spine after our back bends. Can allow the shoulders to relax, elbows to touch the floor. Take a few deep breaths and notice your body expanding with every inhalation. For just a moment, bring the arms alongside the legs if they're not there already. Keep the forehead resting on the mat. Soften the shoulders, let your elbows touch the floor. The next inhalation, rounding the body up, one vertebrae at a time, chin lifting last. We find a kneeling position, take a moment with the eyes closed, hands resting on top of the thighs with palms facing up. Take a moment to notice the nostrils. Notice which side is flowing more clearly. Can you breathe easier with the right nostril or the left? Throughout the day, this will shift, this dominance. And eventually, through certain techniques, both nostrils begin to operate in harmony. And when that happens, we're working our way towards a very beautiful form of balance. Setting up for a seated spinal twist, we can drop our hips to the right side of our heels and bring the left foot over the right thigh. Left foot over the right thigh. Take a moment to notice your left sit bone. If your left sit bone is lifting, you can straighten out the right leg so both hips are flat on the mat. We'll bring the left hand behind the body, trying to keep the palm relatively close to the spine. We don't want to be leaning back so much. And we'll start by hugging the left knee with the right arm 
Every inhalation lifting through the chest, lifting through the crown of the head. Every exhalation twisting, eventually turning the gaze over the left shoulder. Staying about five breaths. If you'd like to go a little bit deeper, perhaps reaching the right arm up. And as you exhale, bringing the right elbow behind the left knee, applying a little pressure to twist you deeper. And if you're choosing that option, ideally reaching down to grab for the right knee or eventually the left foot. Try to notice the shoulders. Ideally, we want the shoulders to be down and back. If you feel the shoulders kind of closing, coming towards the chest, really work to lift a little more, lengthen a little more. It might mean coming back to the first option where you're just hugging the knee with the right arm. That's why we always want to listen to our body. The most advanced variation is always the variation that's most appropriate for you. Preparing to release, gently turn your head to look back to the front of your mat. And as you exhale, allow the body to follow. We'll come back through our kneeling position and switch the sides. Sitting to the left, right foot comes over the left thigh, right foot over the left thigh. Making any adjustments you need, if you want, you can straighten out through that left leg. And when ready, right hand comes behind the body, nice and tight to the spine. Starting soft, always working to hug the knee towards the chest. Intention should be to close the space between your abdomen and thigh. If you'd like to go a little bit deeper, perhaps reaching the left arm up, exhaling to take the arm across the body, applying a little pressure to twist you deeper. Five more breaths. Notice if your breathing becomes shallow. Try to encourage deep, full abdominal breaths. Breathing, inhaling for almost just a little longer than you otherwise would. Preparing to release, gently head turns back to center. Exhale and allow the body to follow. Again, we'll hug the knees in toward the chest. Inhale, lift and lengthen through the crown of the head. Exhale, round the back, forehead to the knees. Stay here and breathe. Try to round through the lower back, pull the navel towards the spine. Next inhalation, lifting back up. Checking in with some balance. We'll start first a short functional screen. See if you can reach your hands forward. Heels should be as tight to the hips as possible and work to shift into malasana, shift into a deep squat. See if you can do that a few times, coming from seated back into our squatting position. If it's challenging to do without the hands, you can always plant the fingers behind you and just give yourself a little bit of a push. Nice way to create a little more mobility through the ankles. Eventually joining me in malasana, nice deep squat. If your heels are lifted, that's perfectly okay for today. We'll set up for our crow pose. So for crow pose, and you can all practice at least a version of this, we would set up with the fingers spread wide, index fingers pointing forward, and the hands will plant roughly shoulder width apart on the mat. You can give yourself lots of space between the hands and the feet. Initially in crow, the elbows act as a sort of shelf. So we would set up by bending the elbows and try to point your elbows back as opposed to out to the sides, elbows pointing back. Now with a smooth inhalation, start to lift the hips and shift forward to take your knees somewhere on the backs of the arms. It'll be easiest if you target the back of the actual elbow instead of the tricep or all the way into the upper arm. And how we enter is always by shifting the body forward. So work to lead forward, look forward, feel that there's weight shifting into your fingertips Maybe you start slowly just bending one knee. See how it feels, maybe switch the sides. 
Eventually bending both, finding your balance. The breath should always be flowing smoothly. Ideally, we're gazing to look forward. Again, the toes don't need to leave the floor. You could be getting a lot of benefit just staying with your toes on the ground and working to shift weight forward to the fingers. That will help you build a lot of strength through the forearms. Releasing together, coming back to Malasana. You can interlace the fingers, roll through the wrists. Change directions, release any tension. And we'll find a way to a standing forward fold. So you can straighten the legs, perhaps bring the feet together. You can always have some balance, some, some space between the legs if that helps your balance. We'll find an inhalation to lift and lengthen halfway. Long spine, weight in the toes. Exhale, folding forward over the legs. Relax the head and neck. Ideally, making some contact between the hands and legs. Might mean grabbing the backs of the ankles, perhaps the calves. If you have the range of motion, maybe tucking the fingers, tucking the palms underneath the toes. Find a few more breaths wherever you are. Notice how changes in where you distribute the weight can have a big impact on the posture. Notice what it feels like to keep weight back over your heels, what it feels like to keep weight forward over the toes. Preparing to release. You can allow the arms to hang either with straight elbows or you can bug, bend and hug for the elbows. Start to shake your head no, nod the head yes, a slight bend in the knees, strong legs, inhale, rolling up, one vertebrae at a time, chin lifting last. Join me in standing. One last thing we'll do before our final relaxation is a little bit of shaking. This is not necessarily a yogic practice per se. But what we would do is set up with our feet about hip distance apart, maybe a little wider. And all that we want to do is use the legs to kind of bounce the rest of the body. So you can join me right now. We're using the legs to bounce the body up and down. You should feel that the face is shaking, shoulders are shaking, chest, upper back, abdomen is shaking, places you didn't even think could shake are shaking. We want to keep everything as relaxed as possible and close the eyes. Very little muscular activation. We're just using a little bit of activation in the legs. Try to find a constant steady rhythm and shift towards a more meditative experience, closing the eyes. Deep, full breaths. Just be aware of how the body feels. Keep the shaking motion going. If you'd like to add some gentle movement, it might feel nice to bring your right ear to your right shoulder. Notice the left neck. Perhaps bringing the head through center off to the left. You can bring the head back through center and find what feels good. Maybe lifting and opening the chest lightly. Some stretch through the front of the shoulders, region of the collarbones. Maybe rounding the back, relaxing the shoulders forward and down. Allow yourself to keep the body shaking. I'll do this for at least another minute or so.
Beautiful. Start to make the shaking a little softer. A little softer still. Even softer. And eventually standing in stillness. Keep the eyes closed. Take a moment to notice how you feel. Perhaps light tingling sense of vibration throughout the body. Just for a moment, you can open your eyes and start to walk around your yoga mat, walk lightly around your space, open and close the hands, just get the energy moving a little bit. When ready, join me in standing towards the top of your yoga mat. Feet together. With an inhalation, reach the arms straight out in front. As you exhale, begin to bend the knees, sink the hips, squatting down. With or without the help of the hands, start to gently relax. Sit down, lie down. Finding way to our final relaxation. At this point, you can absolutely make yourself more comfortable, perhaps a blanket, you can put the socks back on, maybe something to cover your eyes if there's a bright light. Take time to make yourself comfortable. But before we fully relax, we'll be moving through a full body tense and release. It's a very easy way to release lactic acid, any unnecessary muscular activation. And we'll start by lifting the right leg just a few inches from the floor. Squeeze the right thigh, squeeze the calf, flex the foot to the face, squeeze, point the right foot, tense, 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 and completely drop and relax. So when I say drop, just let everything fall down to the floor. That's why we only lift a few inches. Lift the left leg a few inches from the floor. Squeeze the thigh, the calf, flexing the left foot. Point the left toes, squeeze, 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 and drop. Lift the buttocks a few inches from the floor. Squeeze the buttocks, the lower back, tense, 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 tense and drop. We adjust the pelvis if you feel a need. Take a deep inhalation. As you exhale, engage the core, pull the lower back down to the floor, squeeze, 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 tense, 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 and relax. Lift only the chest a few inches from the mat, squeeze the shoulder blades together, tense, 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 and relax. Lift both arms a few inches off the mat, squeeze the biceps, triceps, fingers making tight, tight fists, open the fingers wide, palms facing up, squeeze the arms, tense, 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 and drop. Shrug the shoulders up to the ears, squeeze tightly. Push the shoulders down towards the toes, tense, 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 and relax. For a moment, lift the head, squeeze all the muscles of the face, make a very sour, lemony face, squeeze all the muscles in towards the nose, tense, tense, tense. Release the head, relax the face. Gently open the eyes, open the mouth, gaze upward, stick the tongue out, exhale. And relax. Allow the eyes to close. Lips gently touching. Take a soft inhalation. As you exhale, allow the head to roll to the right side. When you're ready, bring it back through center.
gently roll to the left. Bring the head back to center. With an exhalation, pull the neck down to the floor, tucking the chin in slightly. And release. Make any final adjustments to your posture. Feel quite comfortable, quite content with the way the body contacts the mat. Now mentally, with that little voice inside your head, begin to repeat after me and at the same time observe the effect that these words will have on your body. I relax my feet, ankles, and my calves. I relax my feet, ankles, and my calves. I relax my feet, ankles, and my calves. I relax my knees, thighs, and my hips. I relax my knees, thighs, and my hips. I relax my knees, my thighs, and my hips. I relax my buttocks, lower back, and my abdomen. I relax my buttocks, lower back, and my abdomen. I relax my buttocks, my lower back, and my abdomen. I relax my middle back upper back and my chest. I relax my middle back, upper back and my chest. I relax my middle back, my upper back and my chest. I relax my hands, arms and shoulders. I relax my hands, arms and shoulders. I relax my hands, my arms and my shoulders. I relax my neck my head and all the muscles of my face. I relax my neck, my head and all the muscles of my face. I relax my neck, my head and all the muscles of my face. My breath is relaxing. My mind is relaxing. My whole body is soft and completely relaxed. these next few minutes, I commit to myself that I will remain silent, that I will remain still, allowing myself time to connect with that deep sense of inner peace, allowing myself this time to relax and release.
very gently begin to deepen the breath. Feel the abdomen rising and falling with every inhalation and exhalation. Start to find gentle movements in the body, wiggling the toes, the fingers, maybe rocking the head side to side. Gently bring the legs back together, arms alongside the body. With a smooth inhalation, stretching one last time, inhale to reach the arms overhead. Maybe stretch a little more to the right side, a little more to the left. Eventually release and all together, rolling to the right side. Pausing for just a moment with your upper arm as a pillow. Feel the left hand connecting to the floor. And take a moment to recognize that the version of you who will be leaving this practice will be leaving in some small way just a little bit better than the version of you who walked in. Every time we make it to our mat, every time we make the effort, we are finding improvement. With that in mind, Use your left palm to push into the mat, gently joining me in a comfortable cross-legged position, allowing the eyes to close, the arms, the hands resting wherever feels most authentic to you. And take time to notice the effects from this practice. Notice the movement of your breath, perhaps moving with a little less effort, with a little more ease. Notice the state of mind, perhaps a little more calm, a little more clear. Carry these effects with you throughout the rest of the day. I'm closing the session in the same way that we began. If you would like to do so, I invite you to join me in the chanting of three alms. And I'll repeat also some closing mantras. Exhale all the air out. Inhale together. Satoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Ma Mritam Gamaya Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Aum Shanti 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 I would like to take a moment to thank you all very much for joining me, for sharing with me your presence and your energy, and I thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share my own. Om Namah Shivaya Namaste. Thank you again for your practice. I hope you enjoyed and I would like to remind you that if you did find some benefit from this session, please subscribe to my channel or if you'd like to deepen your studies with me, you can download Becoming Balance, the app which features hundreds of classes just like this 
as well as a number of lectures, online workshops, asana tutorials, and so on. Ciao for now. Om Namah Shivaya.